Can you all see the questions? I'll use my internal mic. Let me just press. So, how's the nation regime? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen wa salatu salam al-Sakreem. So, these are three questions that Christians usually attack us Muslims with. And the brother, like he was suggesting, that he met this week some uh, pastor, and the pastor asked him this question. One of the first questions they ask, which is very common, because, you know, we say that in order to get Jannah, paradise, you have to do what? Good what do we say? What's our um, <coughs> aqidah? Good deeds and uh, right. in, in order to get to Jannah, you have to have aqid, uh, I mean, good deeds, a'mal, salihat. You know, you have to do something. You can't just sit like this, that, oh, la ilaha illa, that's it. I said the kalima shahada. Right? Just saying kalima shahada, will you go to Jannah? Thank you, brother. Jazakallah. A lot of Muslims, they say no. Because Allah SWT said the main key to Jannah is Shahada. So some people can go just by saying La ilaha illa Rasulullah and Allah will them. Like the Ashram Mubashira. Right? The Allah already blessed them. See, the thing is, we have to make them understand the decision to go to Jannah is Allah and solely belong to Allah. And who is Allah? He is the king, the master, the owner. Uh, Malikul Mulk. Uh, Malikul Mulk means the owner of the dominion. He can choose to send anybody without something. Yes, Allah has made a rule, a criteria that you have to do this, 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 then you'll go to Jannah. But is that a shart? Is that a condition? No. That's just a rule, a formula. Formula for success, formula for Jannah. You do these things, you'll go to Jannah. But is that a condition? No. Is that a Compulsory? No, because Allah can choose to negate any rule He wants. He is the musabbibul asbab. He is the creator of all means and He is also mubtilul asbab. He is also the diminisher of any means. Meaning Allah can abrogate any rule He wants. He can say, okay, this person will go to Jannah. I don't care what they had. You know, give them that example that uh, prostitute lady, you know, she fed that dog from her shoe with the water. I mean, she has done so many sins. We all know what that is. But yet Allah SWT forgave her and entered into Jannah. Now can we question Allah? Why Allah you let her go in Jannah just by giving dog water? I do so many things and still I have to go through all this. <clears throat> we cannot question Allah. We as human beings, this is another thing, the Coptic Christians they ask you a lot. They say, why can't we question God? Why can't we equate God? Why can't we evaluate God in the same way we do with us human beings? You evaluate each other, human beings? Yes. Do you e equate each other? Yes. But why can't we do that with God? Come on, what's the answer? Very simple. I've taught you, Baba, these three months. Come on, you must have the answer. He's the creator. He's the creator, so... Creation cannot ask questions to the creator. You are right, but in a way, you have to give a definite answer. Why can't we question God? You're right, he's the creator, so we can't question, but why? Why can't we question the creator? No, no, there is an answer. He is the ultimate. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Allahu samad. What does samad mean? He is the ultimate. He is the all-powerful. So when some being is the ultimate power and source of power and ultimate justice, you are not ultimate. We are weak. We are restricted. We are limited. Allah is infinity. Allah is unlimited. Allah is the creator of all laws, creator of everything. So that is why we cannot consider him. There's an ayah in the Quran, Allah says, لا يسأل أما يفعل وهم يسألون. He is not questioned on what he does. You can't question God. Why you allow some people to go to Jannah, paradise, and why you don't allow? We can't question him. Why? Because we are creation. We are a slave. Can a slave ask the master? 
No. Can a creation ask the creator? No. Why? Because the creator is the ultimate infinity. And we, with all our deficiencies, we, with all our weaknesses, we cannot, we are in, we're not infinity. We're not unlimited. We are finite. We are not immortal. We are mortal. We are, we are restricted. We are limited. So how can a limited creation question an unlimited creator? Our sight is limited, our hearing is limited, our brain is limited, our everything is limited, our reach is limited. So when you have limitation, a limited, even from logical point of view, you can explain, a limited thing cannot question an unlimited thing. <coughs> but vice versa is possible. This, this thing is unlimited, it can question any limited being or creation because they are unlimited. What does unlimited and limited means? One is overpowering, one is super superior, one is above, above the law. You know, like we say in this world, we say nothing is above the law, except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because He made the law. <coughs> so now, the coming to this question, your God demands something for something, first answer you can write it down is, tell me, Mr. Pastor or Mr. <coughs> Christian, is there anything in this world that we can get without something? Is there anything in this whole world, universe, that we can get without something? No. no. Is anything free in this world? No. Even if you want to get a glass of water, you have to do some effort. You have to either buy the water or request somebody or ask them and they might ask you, what do you want to give me for this water? If you say that I'll give you a smile, a hug, okay, you're giving something. So this logical context is flawed to ask. Why? Because this nizam, the nizam, the system of the world that Allah has made, you have to give something to get something. Give and take. <clears throat> In that same logical functioning that we are living for hundreds and thousands and billions of years on earth, in that same way, Allah is saying, you, you want to get paradise, Jannah? It is expensive. Rasulullah uh, said in a hadith that Jannah ghali. Jannah is very, very expensive. Don't think Jannah is cheap. You can't just get Jannah for a glass of water. Or for a bottle of water. You can't get Jannah. You have to do a lot of work. And that's why ultimate decision is Allah's. That even if we have no work or little work, will He bless us Jannah? <clears throat> it's His choice. He can do that. Because that is what we call about Rahmah of Allah. Allah is Rahman and Rahim. And that brings us to the next thing. So, first thing is clear. This world, this <clears throat> world is based on this logic. Nothing in this world. You can't get a car, a house, a job a school, a career, you can't get nothing in this world without you give something. You have to give your time, energy, work to study to get a degree. Why can't we just go to a school and say, hey, just give me that, just give me that diploma. I don't want to come. I don't want to come. I don't want to study. You go to college and say, hey, just give me that degree. I don't want to come here four years and everything. Here's my money. They do that, by the way, today. You can pay them $5,000, get a bachelor's. $10,000, get a master's. But what do we classify that as? Jali. Right? Is that degree usable? Well, they try to use it in some workplaces, but that degree is illegal. Because you never went to school for it. You just say, hey, take this money and just give me this piece of paper. It says masters, bachelors, and then you go to the company, Mr. Headhunter, Mr. Hiring mm. Manager, here's my degree. They call, they <coughs> check, you never attended anything. You never enrolled. Yeah, I just paid them 10,000. You want something for something. So you have to make them, give them examples, worldly examples. That is there anything, they're saying something, right? I'm saying, is there anything in this whole wide world universe that you can get without something? Now he'll begin thinking, let me see. They'll say, yeah, you can get love. You said no, right? Not even love. How? You have to give the love to he'll, he'll love. say He'll say that you get your love from your parents. <clears throat> Right? It's, this is one thing that they always say. Aren't parents giving unconditional love? Do you love your children? Is it conditional? A certain point. It's oh. not, after something is conditional, if you don't, oh. if you don't obey... You Where's don't your obey. children? I need to ask. Of course, if you don't obey, <laughs> if, if you don't, if you don't obey our parents... Yes, you're right. You're right, he's right. Yeah. It's a, it's it a, is unconditional love, but to a certain degree right. and extent. How long, we, how long you as a father and mother will keep loving your child unconditionally? There is an end limit. Lutzen, we're, we're talking with logic. So if you look at numbers, if you look at numbers, alpha, numera, lambda, whatever you want to call it, there is an end limit to it. 
Nothing is unlimited. Unconditional love from parents to children is not unlimited. Because everybody has a reservoir. Why? It all boils down to the same thing. Who are we? Makhluk, creation. What is in our DNA? Limitation, restriction. We're limited. We're not infinity. We're not unlimited. So even my unconditional love for my children is limited. It's not infinity. Allah, on the other hand, He's infinity. He can love us forever without even obeying Him. Biggest proof? Give them always. Atheist. They don't believe in God. But Allah hates them. Do we have any proof that Allah hates the atheists? They're alive, they're getting risk, they're getting a job, a career, business, they're getting food, they're getting a shelter. Allah has given them a livelihood. All the atheists in the world are living a normal life just like me and you. And they die a normal death like me and you. So that is the biggest proof that Allah, in spite of His unlimited, He has given them freedom. Until you die, you're free to do whatever, you're free to believe whatever. But you will face the consequences in the hereafter. So is this point clear? Sisters, is this clear? Right? Very good. Let's go to the next point. Why cannot he just give us anyway? Yeah, he can. He can. Because I gave you the example of that dog. The water, the lady gave the water. There's another example. A man who killed 99 people. This is in the hadith, books of hadith. It's mentioned many times in khutbahs and bayans and sermons. He killed 99 people. He went to a monk. He said, is there any repentance for me? The monk, the priest said, no. He said, he killed them all. 100. Now he goes to a, some other person, a learned man, as the riwayah says. And he says, yes, there is some hope for you. He said, oh, where? Go to this area or mountainous area where there's a monastery where people are studying the book of God. We don't know. This is from the time of Bani Israel. So we don't know which book they're studying, but they're studying some book of God. Go over there and maybe you will find. He didn't say guarantee you'll find forgiveness. Maybe you'll find some answer over there. So he starts walking and what happens? He dies on the way. Still Allah forgave him. Allah sent the angels that go measure the distance from the place he left to the place he died and then measure the distance from the place he died to the place he was going to, destination. And Allah from his mercy forgive. So does God give us anyway? Yes. He killed a hundred people. In the justice of dunya, you would never give this person a paradise. Because the law of dunya says you have to get the return. By the way, when you give this example of this hundred people killed, be very careful. They'll counterattack you, give you a big punch in the middle, say, Oh, so now God is unjust. Uh -huh. How is your God just? Saul won't come out of the 100 people killed, now he's going to Jannah? Then why can't I go and just kill somebody? Let me kill 100 people. So is this uh, extrapolated? Like when you do graphs in mathematics, when you do graphs, so if you're making the graph, can we extrapolate this condition upon every scenario? No. That's why you have bar charts, you have pie charts, you have line graphs, you have different things. <coughs> because not, not everything can be applied on everything. It's a case-by-case -case basis. His intention was seeking forgiveness. He died on the way. So God allowed that. But he, that does not mean that anyone who can <coughs> kill anybody, because then that's pre-intentional. It's premeditated. I'm going to kill 100 people because I'm going to copy like that man, and then I'm going to go to a, to a place where people are studying Quran, and if I die on the way, God's going to forgive me. So you are intentionally, deliberately doing an action for something. He did not intentionally, deliberately go on this path thinking that God's going to forgive him. He never knew that he's going to forgive him, but he forgave him. So yes, God does give people anyway. Second biggest proof of this question, how about this one? Direct paradise without work. Why doesn't Allah give us paradise without any work? Yes. Work is not a condition, it's a criteria. Remember the difference between condition and criteria. Criteria means that there is a framework, there's a rule, a formula, right? That's what criteria means. Condition means, unless and until you fulfill this condition, you cannot, you cannot qualify to receive what that condition brings you. So understand the difference between criteria, condition. Doing amal salihat, doing work to get paradise is a criteria, not a condition. What is the condition to get to paradise? Which is mentioned in the hadith of Rasulullah. Remember that famous hadith which many ulama use in khutab, in khut, uh, khutab and you know, bayans and lectures. You must have heard that very famous hadith. 
where they asked, even you, Ya Rasulullah, he said, yes, even me. Rahmah. Thank you, brother. Rahmah, mercy. The condition to go to Jannah is Rahmah from Allah. The criteria to go to Jannah is Amal Salih, work. So can anybody go to Jannah without work? Yes, it's Allah's choice. Because the hadith says that no one will enter Jannah based on their a'mal. And the Sahaba got shocked, stunned, scared. Oh my God, what? Even you? He said, yes, even me. Uh, uh, except that Allah over, overcomes, uh, over um, shadows me with his rahmah. Illa an yatagammadani Allah bi rahmah. That's the hadith of Rasulullah. Meaning Rasulullah is teaching in that hadith, don't be fooled by shaitan. Don't be fooled by shaitan that, oh, if you do good deeds, now my jannah is guaranteed. A counter question they ask, well, what good is it than doing a'mal salihat? What is the benefit of doing a'mal salihat? Hope. <laughs> yeah, hope is good. Why are we doing a'mal and salihat? I'll show the, we are huh? for our own benefit. Thank you. That's the answer. We're doing a'mal salihat for our own benefit, not for someone else. And we're doing it in the hope that we will get this. But can Allah, God, give us without it? Yes. Rahmah, mercy is there. Can I just say that I don't want to do anything and I just wait for Rahmah of Allah? No. Because the criteria is there. The condition is different. The criteria is different. Allah will say, you are fulfilling the condition, Rahmah. But what is the way to get the Rahmah of Allah? When you show your Iman in action. And Iman in action is called A'mal Salihah. Last but not the least, this one that I like that. <laughs> Why are we deprived from certain parts of Jannah, paradise, because of our sins? Which is right in a sense, because you know, the hadith says, each one, each person will be in Jannah according to the level of their Amal. Not because of sins. You have to first clarify, look, you're using the wrong word. Yes, we may be deprived from certain parts of Jannah. Highest level, Jannah al-Firdaus, where the Siddiqeen, Shuhada, and Anbiya, and Rusul, and Mursaleen, all of them are there. Not everybody is qualified to go there. Some will be not there. So yes, you're deprived from that. But not because of your sins, because you didn't do enough. Rasulullah said, if you do more, 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 keep doing more until you die. That's why Rasulullah said, never rest. Never rest that, oh, I have enough amal. Now I can rest for the last 10 years of my life before I die. No. That's a good uh, example in a student in a, in a class. Not everybody get first or second, third. I was coming to that. Yes, please explain. I mean, whoever put effort and, and did the old things. Yes. And they became. But the Qazi, you hit right on the nail. After you're giving this answer, you tell them, look, you're talking about paradise being deprived. What about the school teacher? She doesn't give A to everybody. Why can't she just give A to everybody? Even the one who is C, okay, you got 70%, but I feel like I want to give mercy. I want to give you A. No, because there is a criteria. You do work, you get your result. You did only 70% of the work, you get a C. You get 99% of the work, you get an A. Nobody's stopping you. Allah is not stopping you from the other parts of paradise. Is Allah restricting me? No. You tell them, no. You just got to do the work. And if you do it, you get there. So Jazakallah khair, I have to rush because I have to be at Isha in my masjid. There are people waiting for me. So I know I have to abrupt end, in, but I at least finish all these three questions. Inshallah, next Wednesday, we'll continue with the slide. I didn't bring my uh, laptop and slides because I knew there was a nice very good, nice refreshment. May Allah bless you, inshallah, and your health, wealth, and rest, and children. Jazakallah khair, wassalamu alaikum.